doesn't want to see that. I think what's authentic to you might be different from what's authentic to me. I hear that. Are you making goofy faces? Just got off a flight in Paris. I am so happy back. Rome is definitely my favorite city in Europe, but Paris has earned an, a very special place in my heart. It's so chill here. I'm hanging out with two amazing friends. We're gonna see some amazing places. I'm standing under the Pont Birekim. Pont de Birekim, which is like incredible. This is the, the bridge they used in Christopher Nolan's Inception. We're gonna have an amazing time here. We're gonna eat incredible food, see incredible attractions. We're gonna go to Louvre. Okay, we're gonna go to the Eiffel Tower. We're gonna eat oysters, drink champagne. We're going to Montmartre, to, to Maison Rose. It's gonna be incredible. Joie de vivre. Ride some bikes, you know? We're a tour company and Vedette is one of our partners in Paris because they offer river cruises. They also have this swanky bar in the Seine with a breathtaking view of the Eiffel Tower. Like the Seine and the Eiffel Tower. It's yeah. like, I mean, you come to Paris the first time, you want to see the Eiffel Tower. Exactly. It's I mean, fun. who doesn't want to see that? I think what's authentic to you might be different from what's authentic to me. Exactly. So everybody yeah. has their own pace. They have coffee, food, and drinks, which I thought is really quite nice. And like I said, it's just a pop away from the Eiffel Tower, which makes it the perfect stop before <laughs> or after your tour. Is it the most authentic bar in Paris? Probably not, but I like the scene. The prices were reasonable. We had a view of the Eiffel Tower and I was with good buddies. So for me, it was perfect. Thanks for coming guys. Yeah, right on. Love it. From Vedette, we headed over to the world's most beautiful cellular tower, which we had plans to climb all the way to the top. We had to show our vaccine cards upon arrival, but they also had a testing site for those who have not yet received a vaccine. As a structure, the Eiffel Tower is prolific, beautiful, and coarse all at once. A mega monument carved in the Champs de Mars for almost no purpose at all other than to be a great viewpoint and a radio and cellular tower. Parisians hated it at first, but today it is definitely the unofficial symbol of Paris, if not France as a whole. You'd be surprised that Paris actually has its own flag and that the tower is not on it. We took an elevator to the second tier and then switched to a different, much less crowded elevator all the way up to the top. At that point, we enjoyed a glass of champagne, which by the way, there is a champagne bar at the top, makes sense, and some rather incredible views. We offer a few different variations of the Eiffel Tower tour, and like any other monument with an exciting history, it's just better with a guide. They really dig into the story, construction, and anecdotes surrounding the structure. Not only that, but they make sure you see everything you're supposed to see. Our guide even pointed out different structures below the Eiffel Tower, which I thought was very interesting and helped me kind of put perspective on the city of Paris. Many of our Eiffel Tower tours include a Seine River cruise, which is admittedly pretty touristy, but also amazing at the same time. If I came to you and said, hey, do you want to come drink champagne on a boat with me in Paris? You wouldn't think twice about it, and that's exactly what you're doing when you take a river cruise. I'm standing in front of Regis Oyster House right now. Then in French, it's pronounced like Huiti, but I'm not even gonna try to butcher that myself. This place is awesome. I've been looking forward to coming here for so long. I found it in the pandemic, and now I'm here standing in Paris, and I'm about to eat delicious French oysters. These guys are legit. They house, or they source all their oysters from France in, what'd they say, Brandon? In Brittany. Brittany, okay? And we'll just see how good they are, I man. I'm like, I'm like glowing with joy. I'm, I'm giddy, I feel like a kid on Christmas. If you are unfamiliar, oysters are mostly farmed, just like tomatoes. Also like tomatoes, there are different types of oysters and farming methods. It sounds like some sort of modern practice, right? Hell no. The Romans loved oysters as much as we do and were farming them as early as the last century BC. There's even been oyster shells found in the ruins of the Colosseum. The Romans realized that they are farmed better in colder climates and started farming them in Britain instead of the Italian peninsula and exporting them to the southern parts of the Roman Empire. Also like tomatoes, there are different types of oysters and farming methods. Switch. You have the fin de clair. Okay. Uh, fin de clair, so good. Special de clair. Black pearl. Fin de clair oysters are the filet mignon of oysters. Instead of being grown in the rough open seas, they're finished in shallow, calm clay ponds about knee deep in an area known as Meren Oléron, 
which is nearby to Bordeaux. Interessante, interessante. I thought about you the entire pandemic, you yeah. Parisian oyster. Oh my god. Dude. The wine, the wine. Sea breeze. It's like when the Zephyr in the Botticelli is blowing and the Venus is like on her little clamshell, that's what the Fair is. Pressuring me. Here's your toothpick. Mm. So, Witteri. We 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 okay, they only have like 10 tables outside. You can come here for 30 minutes, crush a couple oysters, drink a glass of wine, or you can sit here for three hours and have a full meal. It's all delicious, fresh, brought in shellfish. What do you guys think? I think it's A+. I think it's amazing. The oysters were some of the best I've ever had. The great really? saltiness together with this wine completely balances out. Perfect. For me, it's just a really great French experience. Check it out. The oysters were great, and we continued our journey to Chez Nou. Outside of Chez Nou, on the left bank of Paris, right by Pont Neuf, they have a very new concept, or a cool concept, of a menu-less experience. So they do wines, and they do foods. They're not particularly on a menu. They're trying to walk you through an experience, which we're about to do, and I'm super excited about, because these guys are so cool, and they got such a good thing going on. By the way, we're on the left bank by Pont Neuf. It's really cool, I mean, I love it, and the view is amazing. Um, so we've, we have four dishes here. We're gonna start with the burrata, which is not French at all, it's Italian. It's from, this is from Puglia, apparently. Um, and it's gonna explode with flavor. Amazing. I, mean, I, I don't know if I've had it this good in Italy. I've lived there for like 10 years. Mmm, wow. I mean, it's so good. I mean, it's incredible. It's eating raw beef. The flavors inside this are just, I mean, they're all over my palate. Flavor of pine nuts, too, which is quite nice. Chez Nou is located right by Paris's Pont Neuf, which is very central. It is a perfect pre-dinner or light lunch spot after a visit to Saint-Chapelle, which we will get to very soon. You could also play a game of pétanque in Place Dauphine and stop by here after you work up a sweat. Never hear of pétanque? We'll also get to that later in the video. For now, it's time for a full meal and we're going to Le Maison Rose. I'm out front of Le Maison Rose. Really cool story. Opened in 1908. Salvador Dali slept on the floor. Current owner of Terrence bought it in 1948 okay, and would lease it out because it was already a famous restaurant at the time and it became a little touristy and she took it back in 2016 because she just wanted the, the legend, the, the, the memory of her parents to stay alive and brought it from a, what was considerably kind of a touristy restaurant into what is now an eco-friendly, environmental friendly, you know, treasure of Montmartre. And we're gonna go and eat some of her food. It's gonna be delicious, I think. Amazing table, by the way, right here. I just love like the, the color palette here. We have like all these reds and greens and, and beautiful colors. The cuisine is an interesting combination of French and Italian that the owner describes as cucina di nonna, or grandma's cooking. Warm dishes that relax you and allow you to really be present in the moment. I just love goat cheese so much. It is so stunning. The owner complains about all the influencers and Instagram models who stand in the middle of the road to take photos in front of the restaurant without even sitting down to try the food. Laurence, the owner, said she had to repaint the exterior of a restaurant annually due to the social media addicts putting their feet all over the walls. If you're planning to go to Montmartre, you should make a reservation here and I don't think you're gonna regret it. Just don't put your feet on the walls. Thanks. Jour de gloire. 
Day two, so this is the second day. Big day today, super amped up. I mean, I just love the city. We just walked through Paris this morning. It was like empty, it's a bank holiday today. So the city was just empty. Beautiful walk through the city. Now we're sitting down having a cafe, like a French style cafe, seats facing out. Going to the Louvre, it's gonna be awesome. If you've seen my other video on the top things to see at the Louvre, then you already know how much I love and adore this museum. It is the largest gallery on earth and arguably the greatest collection ever assembled by women and men. A tour is an absolute must. We put together a private tour since we had a specific list of art we wanted to visit and wanted to have a strong narrative with the guide. If it's your first time visiting the Louvre or your first time considering a guide, we recommend our three hour Louvre tour which covers the main sites and really, really dives into the lives of the artists. So I was talking to our guide Zdravko after the Louvre tour today, and he was telling me how right over here in Place de Concorde, that's where the guillotine was. It's famously where Maria Antoinette got her head chopped off, as well as Louis XVI. How's that feel, like, you think, when you have your head in the guillotine? Like, what are you thinking at that point? Our father, Ave Maria, and the last wish is done. <laughs> you know, you know it's, it's, it's good night. It's, it's game over. I don't know what I'm thinking, man. You're probably pretty happy. You're like, this is a lot better than being burnt at a stake. You know, it's just going to be instant. It goes a quick, clean cut. That's all you yeah. Need. Quick and clean. Sharpen the blade. On Teresan. So we're here at Las Louis Falafel, okay? Apparently, the best falafel in all of Paris, possibly all of Europe. The world? Maybe the world might be a stretch, uh, definitely but Paris. definitely Paris. Definitely sure. Paris. Yeah. Everyone goes here, it's awesome. It's a really cool place and ready you have to try. We got the, what did, what did you order for us, Angel? I ordered the, just the classic uh, falafel mm -hmm. uh, sandwich, which is very inexpensive. It's under 10 euros, and you get several pieces of falafel, lots of sauce, veg, so it's fully vegetarian, which is quite nice. I love it. Love it. Fried aubergines. Let's dig in. I'm, I'm starving right now. Definitely want to try this with the pork first, right? Yeah. And there's a spicy version and a non-spicy version. So we went with spicy. And the key of eating it is to have your feet spread apart so you don't actually drop food on your feet. Assume the position. All right. Oh, yeah. That's money. That's delicious. Super crunchy. Super flavorful on the inside. Lots of flavor hit you at one oh time. God. Yeah. Mm. C'est bon. And it's vegetarian, so it's C'est bon. Yeah. bon. C'est bon. If you come to Paris, definitely check it out. People don't look at falafel like a Parisian food, but it has become a Parisian food. It is very, very, you know, part of the local culture. So definitely check it out. You gotta grab them while you're here. Just as much as you have to grab, you know, foie gras or something like that. So we've been working hard all day, doing a lot. Saw the Louvre, ate a lot of food. You know, it's really tough to do these type of things. So I'm gonna take a break for coffee while I do that. If you wanna, just do me a favor and like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Sure. Were you making goofy faces? No. You better not have been. No, I was serious. Le Marais has this incredible local feel, which is why so many travelers wanna spend so much time in this quarter. Ile de la Cite, or the city island, is where you will find what are arguably the most beautiful stained glass windows ever created by humans and undoubtedly inspired by God. I am not generally a religious person, but the architect who created Saint-Chapelle, or the Holy Chapel, most definitely was, and what an inspiration it is. According to historian Chris Van Uffelen, the chapel was originally built to house religious relics such as Jesus' crown of thorns, which was acquired by Louis IX in the 13th century. The crown now resides in Louvre, but for such an important relic, a grand chapel would have to have been built. The windows canvas 640 square meters, or almost 7,000 square feet, portraying 1,134 scenes from the Bible. The chapel became a target during the French Revolution in the 18th century, and there was some damage, but two thirds of the windows are original to the 13th century when it was built. Saint-Chapelle is a must-see monument in Paris that no one should miss. It was almost sold out during the pandemic, so you can imagine what it's like when travel resumes freely. The stained glass windows dwarf you once inside. They are beautiful, confident, proud, and inspiring all at the same time. 
They're a reminder of what women and men can accomplish as a collective. I found myself in this narrow but tall space pondering about my life, just like Julius Caesar at the grave of Alexander the Great, wondering, you know, what I've accomplished up to this point in life. We almost didn't get inside because like fools we are, we tried to bring petanque balls inside and were laughed at by all the security guards. Here on Ile de la Cité, my pronunciation is not so great, but it's the same island that Notre Dame is on, as well as saint Chapel, Chapel, which we just came from. Pont Neuf is right here, one of like, the most famous bridges in Paris, and we're playing pétanque. Pétanque. It's a French game, like bocce ball. It comes with one small ball called a piglet, and then additional larger metal balls. The idea is to throw the piglet out and then throw the metal balls, and whoever gets their metal balls closer to the piglet gets points. Uh, basically, you know, if you have one ball that's closer to your opponent's ball, you get one point. If you have multiple balls closer to your opponent's ball, you get multiple points and you play to 13. It's a very common game here in France, especially in Paris, and there are pétanque courts all over the city. This one in Place Dauphine, just look for the sand. Um, there's one in Place Vosges, we saw one on the river. You could play in the Tuileries Gardens. As long as you see this sand, you can pretty much play pétanque. Standing in front of Bizu in La Marais, really cool cocktail bar. Their concept is they don't have a menu. You come in, you literally tell them about yourself and they craft a cocktail for you. Bartenders are really passionate about what they do. They make craft cocktails and they're very into it. So they're taking like personality traits and making you a specific cocktail. Mine was amazing. Whoa! <laughs> absinthe and bourbon together. We finished off our evening at Yovine's, which is a great pizza spot. We've been to Paris so many times, and at this point, we really wanted to try new places that were recommended to us by our friends in town. That's why we didn't only eat French dishes and why we're going to a Napolitana pizza place. This joint was as authentic as they come, and this is coming from a guy who spent a decade of his life in Rome. As soon as we walked through the door, we were conversing in Italian because everyone that worked there was from Naples and the pizza reflected that. Whoa. We make these videos to balance culture with practicality and Yovines is the perfect lunch or dinner spot near the Louvre that is inexpensive and delicious. Don't be fooled by the lack of people inside when we filmed. We filmed between services 99% of the time. This place gets absolutely packed, so make a reservation in advance. Pizza really the best, and this is Italian pizza in France. We'll see how it is. Damn, that tastes like we're in Naples. Yeah. No, it tastes just like we're in Naples right now. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not a, without a doubt. It tastes like you're in Naples. Woke up this morning on our last day in Paris. We've been here for three physical days, but about 48 hours in total. And just gonna kind of walk around the Luxembourg Gardens. It's so nice right now. The air is cool, the, the wind's blowing, there's people running everywhere. And it's just like a, a really great way to end an amazing 48 hours in Paris. Gotta thank my friends Angel and Brandon for coming with us. You're saying this isn't a French villa? Well, it, it technically is, yeah, but it has Italian origins, which is quite nice. You know, Marie de Medici, who was the second wife of Henry IV, eventually became Queen of France, and this was this was her place. So it has an Italian stamp on it for sure, which is very very interesting. Interessant. Oh, interessante. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you love it, subscribe and click that notification button because that's how you're gonna get notifications of our next video, which is coming out soon.
standing in front of Bizu. Okay, really cool cocktail bar. Sorry. <laughs> standing in front of Bizu. Okay. I hear that. Come on. We are here at Las Du Falafel. Falafel? Falafel. Las Du Falafel? Las Du Falafel. I say falafel. <laughs> you say falafel, I say falafel. Okay. You say falafel. Microphone and everything running before a car hits me. Alvin, for giving me a microphone with no batteries in it. Dude. <laughs>